Okay, here we go. So we just want to um, say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I have my partners in crime, these young women that are thriving to educate America and learn from the challenges of America and their own selves and families. What's really going on? Like Marvin Gaye says, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? All right. Okay, where are we going to start? Who we want to start with? What? Well, bring in the topic. Bring it. Okay, bring it. I said bring in the topic. Okay, so we are looking <laughs> at the physical, psychological, and emotional effects um, that have generated on society through slavery. How the collective um, has dealt with slavery issues, discrimination out there. There's been rioting and looting. and But we want to look at how the effects in the household have been for these cultures, such as Black Americans, African Americans. Because one of the things that I find is that many people disassociate DNA and biological um, aspects, the effects of the psychological um, generational trickling down, or as some people would say, generational challenges, issues, generational curses. Um, a lot of our people especially look away from the DNA and what it does, the composite of it, or the spiritual part of it. So something that I have seen and I looked at that many people, I guess maybe they felt like I was crazy, was abuse in families. Abuse in families across the board. But when I looked at it from the dynamics of my own, then I had to really face the issues. And that's not to say that I looked at it to blame anybody, but I had to understand why my mother was abused and my grandmother. There was some patterns and cycles there. The other thing is, is that I did study. And that's why I brought these young women in with me because their minds are thriving to understand history, the past. But when spirit comes and shows you things about your family and there are cycles that have to be broken even from the religious, you know, there's a part where religion has its place. But if you don't let spirit come in and tell you the truth, then you will be amiss. And the spirit has shown us today that a lot of people have been oppressed because of a system, a system that was created in the 1600s that many people, um, lost their rights, they were abused, they were sexually abused, they were homeless, they didn't have proper food to eat, and their families were separated, their families suffered because of this, husband and wives uh, did not get the chance to actually um, live out a time together because they were separated and sent or sold to different masters. And so when I talk to people about these things and I've had people that didn't want to address it, I feel like that's fine. But I got some people here that want to address it because they understand the dynamics. They probably saw those issues in their family. And why are we talking about it? Because we want people to know that seeing a person abused in the streets, as so we've seen, um, even in hangings, you know, over history, we want to know that we, um, we feel them, but we also want to bring it back home and say, how did Emmett Till's uh, mother feel when he, she knew he was not the one that raped that woman, but he was killed. He was killed. And they just justified it within the, the last five or 10 years that he was not the one that did it. Although it is said that they knew. So these kind of things have been going on. So how did she feel knowing that her son was uh, killed and it was not the correct thing? He did, had not committed the crime. 
Now, when you go back into the household, this can be a fragile thing because a lot of people will begin to cringe and say, well, I don't want, I don't want people to know my business. The truth will make you free. You won't have to run no more. You don't have to run from yourself if you was the one that raised your hand to somebody. You would not have to run no more if you was the one that molested somebody because what you will understand is that you need to get some help because cycles repeat through generations. Abuse of power, abuse of sexuality, abuse, domestic violence, it runs through families. And the answers had not been really uh, grasped because some people didn't really understand if they were receiving the information that it is true. The cycles of economic abuse that comes from the system or from a mother or a father that does not know how to do budgeting or have enough money for the amount of children that they, these are all areas that people have to learn about. Even when someone says that they don't feel like they're a teacher, if you have information to share, you're a teacher because you have something to give. It's the person that's selfish that doesn't want to give the information. Because if you made it over in an area, you could be suffering in another, but if you made it over financially, then there's a lot of people that need to know about that that have the same color skin as yours. And even, I will say this here, it's not about skin color for me but I do want to teach our people if they're open to listen. It is about cultures for me because it doesn't matter what color your skin is, oppression and suppression is there. And then depression comes. So now I'm going to let one of y'all begin to move forward in, in whatever capacity that you have that you can empower them, empower us. Well, I guess I'll start. So when I think about how, um, what's going on collectively, how that mirrors back to the, our families, in particular the Black families, you know, I, before you, when you called our text about this topic, um, I was sitting in meditation and I heard Spirit say, give me strength. So I thought about that. And at first I was like, yeah, give me strength. And then I was like, no, don't give me strength. I said, because that was the catchphrase that a lot of people, I know when I first heard that catchphrase, which I believe to know and I know to be spells, was in church, religious, right? So, but those type of words, those type of words mean that if you say give me strength, that means the universe is saying your wish is my command. So I'm going to give you every experience for you to demonstrate strength. Okay, so then you get slavery. Okay, so then now if you want to fast forward to modern day and how people collectively, especially, and we're talking about black people, indigenous people, people indigenous to the United States, they were suppressed. Okay, the men, they were enslaved, modern, uh, now, I'm sorry, if, if we're looking at today, the establishment oppresses us. So who's the establishment? That could be your employer, that could be your teacher, mm -hmm. that could be anyone who's oppressing you, right? So then those men, those, those fathers in, in, the, in our families, they brought that home. They had to take it out somewhere. They were being emasculated, right? right. Someone was oppressing them. Mm -hmm. inflicting their control over them. So then they brought it home to, your, to the, our families. Now the wife is feeling it. The children are feeling it. They're now being oppressed. And then of course, mother, now she, does, she can't be in her feminine energy anymore. She's got to toughen up to, with, to be able to take this, this energy that's coming from the man in her household. Yep. Okay, so now she's giving it to her children, and it's a cycle. So now the woman is in her, her, um, her masculine energy. And so, that, so then anyway, so Spirit then says to me, well, say it backwards. So then I say, I, I say, okay, strength me give, or strength I give. Good, good, good. So then Spirit was saying, that's what it's about. That's how we undo this. We give strength, empowerment to other people, to someone else, 
to transform all that was done to you, you do the opposite. Mm -hmm. You do the mm -hmm. opposite. So you empower yourself first, giving yourself self-love, self-appreciation, self-compassion. Okay? And then you will reflect that and then the mirror, the world will just mirror you. And then, you know, I, that brings me to the era that, the age that we're in, where now you hear people say, oh, it's the rise of the feminine energy. I think what people first have to understand is that when you say the rise of, of the feminine energy, that doesn't mean that we're suppressing masculine. We don't want that control. We're talking about as the feminine rises, the masculine energy decreases to bring us back to balance, which is zero point. Yes. So I mean, everything that's happening on the world stage, it, it attributes back to ourselves. But in order for us to really get through this, we, we can't, and I think that's where we've been going wrong all this time, because we fight fire with fire. No, 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 no. You, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't give them back what you're giving, what, what they've been giving you. You never win. You have to jump off that cycle and, and give the opposite, which is what's the opposite of suppression, oppression, which is all boils down to what? Fear. What's the opposite of that? Of that? Love. Love. That's, unconditional that's, love. Unconditional yeah. love. Yes. Thank you. Unconditional mm -hmm. love. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I was meditating on today. And, and, and then you know, well, I'll pass it to somebody else before I keep going. <laughs> I actually like that point, but I want to take it back even further. Let's talk about the the murder of the black man's masculinity from time, from the top, from the point of slavery up till now. Yeah. Yeah. In slavery, the black man basically had to allow master to rape his wife, sell his children, and not be able to do anything about it. Right. Not be able to do anything about it. And we all know that the, the the times of slavery have caused all these generational issues within the black community but that's 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 one of them that's basically one of the roots and then let's talk about how black women in slavery had to just take it and not and and basically be made to feel like they can't rely on their black husband or their black that's counterpart right. and right. they had to be strong because if their husband rose up against the master, the, the master would kill the, her husband. Mm -hmm. And then probably right. kill her children to send a message. Right. And, and, and so that's I a, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's fine. Um, and then let's talk about when slavery was, when slavery ended, yeah, slavery ended, but we were still being oppressed in some type of way because, yeah, like we were still being slaves in some type of way because we weren't even given equal opportunity. Like we had, they paid us like what, 20 cents? To, for work, 20 cents a week or 30 cents a week or even 50 cents a week. But even prior to that, we were sharecroppers. Yeah. We went from slavery to, oh, you can have your land mm -hmm. as long as you work on mine. So as you work on mine, you get a little bit of yours. Yep. As you do for me, you can then do for yourself as well, which means that still we weren't free. Mm -hmm. And just uh, before you continue, also to take it back to the fact of you first become a slave to your mind. Mm -hmm. And that is what they do by breaking you down, by removing your family, by taking away your culture, taking away what you see as traditions, by separating you from those that you identify with. They have now broken you down and you become a slave to what they say. They tell you, you are not who you are. If you think about in roots, every time he said to you, what is your, he said to him, what is your name? And he answered with his name, he was beat. Because he refused to become a slave, but so often these people were broke. And when they were broken, they adopted master's culture, mm -hmm. what he said to be true, and perpetuated it. So go ahead, continue. Okay. And like, so <laughs> when you finish, I want to add this information. Go ahead. And let's take it back even then. In the history book, they don't even tell you about um, how the slave, how the slaves set, um, they tell you a little bit, it's like a little blurb, how the slaves set fire to the ship and de decided that they wanted it to, to swim in the ocean instead of becoming slaves. They don't tell you about the Huey Newtons or the, they tell you a little bit about the Malcolm X's or the Black Panther Party. They don't tell you about the good that they've done because right. Huey P. Newton was about everyone coming together, about everyone eating, about feeding everybody, about putting the black woman first, about bringing up children, about feeding them, about community, about going up against 
the powers that be. Right. And so, and they didn't like that. Okay, and so to, I'm sorry, go ahead. Let me know and when then you towards, finish because I gotta add this. <laughs> and then Malcolm X later on in his life, he he came to the conclusion that it's all about oneness. And that's why now today there's so there's such a divide. And I and I understand it, but it's like you have the poor blacks or the middle class blacks, and then you have the poor whites and the middle class whites, and nobody's realizing that we are all the same. Like we are all slaves to the to the to, to the powers that be. We are all their slaves. And they want us to be divided and, and they want to keep us divided because once we come together, it's over. Like once we come together and once we start growing and once we start helping each other and uplifting each other, how can they control us? How can we still be their slaves? Right. Okay. How can they do this? But let's go back to how they did it. All right. Okay. There's a lot of interest of how they did it. You guys have spoken. I want to acknowledge how slavery affected African Americans. And um, you could reference nationalhumanitycenter.org. And the reason why I want to bring it up uh, in a reference is because we want viewers to know that there's documentation, not just our opinion. So I'm going to read out of a whole lot of information that you can study and make yourself approved of knowledge from this site. Um, so it's saying, and I'm not taking anybody's information because I've referenced them. It says, enslaved people lived with the perpetual possibility of separation through the sale of one or more family members. Slave mm -hmm. owners' wealth lay largely in the people they owned. Therefore, they frequently sold and or purchased people as finances warranted. A multitude of scenarios brought about sales. An enslaved person could be sold as a part of an estate when the master died. A father might be sold away by his owner while the mother and children remained behind or the mother and children might be sold. Enslaved families were also divided for inheritance. These decisions were, of course, beyond the control of the people whose lives they affected the most. Sometimes an enslaved man or woman pleaded with an owner to purchase his or her spouse to avoid separation. The intervention was not always successful. Historian Michael Tadman was estimated or has estimated approximately one third of enslaved children in the upper South states of Maryland and Virginia experienced family separation. <laughs> and y'all, that's where y'all at. Y'all in that vicinity. Um, in Maryland and Virginia, uh, and it says possible scenario sales away from parents, sell with mother away from father, a sale of mother, a father away from the children, the fear of separation haunted adults who, who knew how likely it was to happen. Young children innocently unaware of possibilities learn quickly of the pain that such separation could cause. I have read documentations and, you know, uh, and I've seen documentaries where women killed their babies so that they would not be in that position. Mm -hmm. Now, what we face still today is separation in our families. And again, Many of our men and women don't even realize that they're running from something, running into something that they don't want to face. They are in mastered by slave consciousness. Yes, yes. Af afraid of facing the truth that haunts you daily. And some people will say, how could you say that? Well, listen, we, there's a thing called spirit. And because many people do not want to believe in it or they put it aside, they're haunted by their childhood. They've seen their parents in the light that they didn't want to, divorces, separation, that I don't feel like many of our ancestors wanted, but they were pushed into it. Now, I know that there's another part of when they were in Africa, but I'm talking about here right now, where the healing is available and we can look at the same reason 
the tension rose after many, many, many years and centuries of killing for discrimination reason and lynching. After all of this tension is rose and is being used collectively, we want it to also be used for our family healing. We want us to address the economic issues, how it makes a man or a woman feel insecure in their, uh, their manhood or womanhood or in their families and how the economic suppression and issues separate our families today. It's not just because you don't utilize your potential. Your potential can be utilized, but you're still working against some hard, pressurous circumstances as a person of color, or if you're in a different culture, or if you were born in a poor family, white, black, or not. The suppression is there. I've, I've talked to a lot of educated people that don't even know that they're educated, but because of their education, they can't see beyond what's happening right here. If there is anger about something in the streets happening, let's, let's get angry enough to start healing our families. Let's get yep. angry enough to hang in there and stop hitting each other abusively and stop speaking words unkindly because something happened to us in the past. Let's get angry enough with ourselves to address our own inner conflict mm -hmm. and not throw it off on other people. See, I am my brother's keeper, but I cannot keep you emotionally. Yep. Our children have suffered battering and abusing, as Nyla said. We've suffered economically. I'm not speaking to put pressure on anyone in the aspect of saying that, oh, racism, that racism, because racism is a distraction. Yes. Yep. If you don't have enough money, then you're out the box. That's it, mm -hmm. as it has been. The powers that would be, this is the way that they, they function off of capitalizing. So if you got enough money, your color don't matter mm -hmm. because they can capitalize off of you. Where does that leave the families that have suffered homelessness today? Abuse economic issues from slavery to now where does that leave the families that have been involved in domestic violence sexual abuse where does it leave it because if you never ever go back and look at history you will not know that this has been something that's been going on forever mm -hmm. yeah and it's, it's so interesting because you know when you talk about um suppression from that point of view um, I, I'm just thinking about how it's happening on all levels, you know, suppression. Like right now, just like we have the material world, but we also have the spiritual world. On the spiritual world, it's the spiritual warfare of the divine feminine energy. The divine yeah. feminine energy is the intuitive energy. The nurturing energy goes with the flow. And, and, in, and in particular, in this timeline, it's the black feminine energy. So, you know, as listen, black feminine women are about to be the most revered women on this planet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the most revered. And that's why, if you think about it, that's why uh, on television, they make you hate yourself. With, that's the whole racism thing, so that you that, don't yeah. love yourself. They even program men to not even want to hate them, their mothers. So they, yeah. they don't, then they don't want a woman that looks like their mother. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they knew this, you know, this was written a long time ago. They knew that it would become a time where black women would be the most revered and they want us to themselves. But you gotta be awake to see what's really going on. That's why they started mm -hmm. pushing interracial ma marriages and relationships because they wanted they knew who we were before yeah. we even knew who we were. The strength, yep. yes. They, they knew that, right? The so they, they wanted us for themselves. They didn't want our black men to have us. So they, it was a mind. They screwed it with, with the mind, with psycho. It was, oh, this is psychology. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, right. I mean. It's psychological warfare. It is psychological warfare. And I mean, it's, it's just so amazing how on each level, I mean, uh, 
anything you could think of, you can see how this relates. I mean, even when you talk about back in slavery, the, with the buck breaking that, that yeah. went on to emascu emasculating mm -hmm. our men. And then, yeah, okay, we, we were sharecroppers, but I, th you know, I would be, listen, I'm all for one, one for all. However, we can't overlook the fact that black people have been the ones who have been mainly oppressed in this world. So yeah, okay, yeah. we're all equal, but at the same time, yeah, white people are slaves, but see, they don't have, they don't think they're slaves. They think mm -hmm. that they're a part of that white collective. Like most yes. people, who, white people who are, are unawake, they think that they're on Trump's level or whoever mm -hmm. level, and they're not. You're a slave. And You're why? a slave. Why is that though? The conquer and divide, or the <laughs> divide and conquer. And that's the programming. It's, it's that's more the than conquer and divide. It's what, what happened mentally to our ancestors and what yes. did not happen to them. We see exactly. it still every day. The, the lesser, okay, a woman can go and get a job, but let's just get here with women's lib and women's lib not being fair. And somebody can go, not y'all, but people that's listening, they can begin to research it. It was, it was a setup for Black families to even more be um, separated because if, yes. women become, if they became more empowered, then they would forget about their um, relationship and their title to their family. Mm -hmm. Which happened. Now, w when that happened, the other thing would happen is, is that they wouldn't have any need for the man. And you know, yep. when the buck was broken, and that was what the male uh, Mandingos was called back then, the woman still loved her husband, even though there was a problem because he was having to actually sexually breed with others. Like, you understand? The mm -hmm. other thing is, though, that that part of the man that has been, his seed has been bred throughout generations into other people has caused our men to desire more than their family. They have been mm -hmm. separated because of their seed being spread out. It's just like you see a farm. Your seed is in this firm and then it's in another firm. Now you got to go and deal with all other firms. Mm -hmm. They never looked at that. And some men never looked at it. But if your seed is not in one garden, I, would, I always told my children, because I have sons, you're going to pay the price. When you spread your seed, and even if you ain't had children over there, now what you're doing is intertwining with more gardens, and that's weeds, possibly. Yep. yep. No one is looking at how it is affecting, but from the time that they were in this ability, and surely these things were going on overseas, but we want to address it. Because we believe in the divine masculine and the feminine. Mm -hmm. This is our time to look at solutions. How do you build a healthy family? And we as a people have to look at how we can do that. That means that the men and women that have not been core planted with their families, they have to address it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if you weren't core planted, it doesn't matter where you came from and what you did not have. If your seed is scattered and you're scattering it even more, even if you're not reproducing, that means that your thoughts are everywhere as well. How can you take care of home when you are everywhere planning, scattering your seed and your seed is coming through your genitals? Because men and women think in the powerless aspects or faculties before they come up in their brain and begin to really think. You got to hit the heart before you can even deal with what I'm saying and then come into your mind. Your body has to become whole before you can understand that you have allowed yourself to be scattered amongst all different type of people, things, and ways. And this has been a generational culture of Africans to slavery, and to now. If you ask what the discussion is about, I gave the level, but I want to know, when does the healing come for us? Because there's a lot of women and men that have been waiting for healing of their marriages. Why don't your marriage work? Maybe it really is you needing to take a look at your history, yep. Your, yep. your family, your generations. 
How do you do that? It's honesty. Mm -hmm. yep. If you came from brokenness, you can fix the brokenness in you. No one else can do it. And that's where it begins because when I say collective going out protesting and looting and rioting because of killings, hey, I'm, I'm off. Thank you that there's been a change of some things and people are listening. But, you know, we want a listening ear that when you are angry about what's going on out in the streets, don't forget about your home. Don't forget about the children that you had. Don't forget about your responsibilities. Because when you can go and feel some way about the collective, you can't be half-hearted about something that you produced, something mm -hmm. that you started. You got to finish it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. And I, 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 when you said the talked about how do we heal, I heard the healing is here. Yes. That's why we have to, mm -hmm. you know, we have to remember that within each and every one of us, we have masculine and feminine energy. So we have to bring that alignment and balance within first. Mm -hmm. And then it trickles out. Okay. So once we address it and resolve, forgive ourselves for how we have mistreated ourselves, how, how we have tried to control and, and fight, you know, within internally, right. forgive that. And then on a, on a, then everyone has to do that individually. Then it's addressed on the family level. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it just goes up. So I think the healing is here. It starts within. Yeah. It starts it does. Within. And everyone I didn't has know. a responsibility to do that. That's how we do it as a collective. Otherwise, we can't, how, we can't do it unless we yeah. all stand up and take the responsibility to heal ourselves within and bring right. ourselves yeah. into balance. So, I agree. I didn't realize until I started my journey on healing how programmed or how, how much it affected my family until I, I looked back and I was like, I was introduced to trauma at a very young age. Like I saw things and not even that, like, cause my, I, I was raised in a single parent home first off. And then even though that parent shielded me from a lot, I still witnessed it in other family members. I saw domestic abuse. I saw, like, I saw a lot. Like I saw the broken homes and the effects that it has. And I didn't realize it until I started this journey was like, I was basically from a young age, from, from what I can remember, I was programmed to be the strong black woman. <laughs> but when do I not be like, and, and that's why, that's why we always have that imbalance. That's why our, our masculine energy is at the forefront. And I, like, I didn't start thinking about it, like, when do I get to not be strong? Like, when do and I get to be you that? Your mother? Nope. No? no? Cause my, I grew up, I grew up without my mom. Ah. But see, it's not just it's not just that. Yes, at a, we are programmed to be strong, but then we look at addictions that come into our home. Yep. Alcohol addiction, drug addiction, and how that also breaks down our family and makes mm -hmm. us a slave and makes our family members slaves to situations. Specifically, I grew up with two alcoholic parents. In my family alone, I watched drugs mm -hmm. divide my cousins from their mothers, their fathers, everything, and take them away. So it's all of these situations that come into our homes that are organized by the powers that be that we let control us mm -hmm. that perpetuate a constant divide. Mm -hmm. I was raised to be that strong black woman by both of my parents, even through their addictions, because it was as if I had to save myself and I had to save my family. Yep. I was the one that was going to make it better. I was the, and so then I'm sitting around thinking, well, who's going to save me when I'm tired? Yes. And who's going to be my strength? Yes. <laughs> but what we have to realize, like you said, Nayla, the strength comes from within us. Mm -hmm. When we balance ourselves, we are then able to forgive. Mm -hmm. We, not just ourselves, but our families. Mm -hmm. You have right. to, I have to forgive my parents for being alcoholics because those were things that they did to cope with their situations. Mm -hmm. 
you, my cousins have to forgive their families. We all have to step into forgiveness and recognize that we all just do the best that we can, mm -hmm. but now there's something that has to be better. I want to say most of my cousins grew up in foster homes. Like they were taken from their parents because of drugs. Mm -hmm. And then looking back, and especially with um, the relationship between me and my dad and me and my mom, looking back, I had to realize that what, hap what they did to me was done to them. And what was done to my grandparents was done, or what my grandparents did to my, my, my parents was done to them. So it's, it's just a like a, a cycle. And then I realized like my, my, my dad did the best, the, did the best that, that he could with the tools that he had. And even though the tools that he had were not much, he did, he, he, he did, he, he did what he could. Mm -hmm. And whatever right. he couldn't figure out, he learned it along the way. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I can see how, you know, both of my parents taught me, how, you know, or instilled in me that, oh, be strong. But it more so came from my mother, um, for me. But I can see how my father um, didn't do it either because he wasn't balanced. So he couldn't mm -hmm. provide nurturing either because mm -hmm. he, he wasn't nurtured. Yep. Yeah, you know, man. so I when you think that about that, the nurturing, and my mother's nurturing was okay. toxic nurturing. Yeah. It was toxic. Yeah. So. The, the nurturing um, amongst men was not invited probably until the 70s or 80s. Men mm -hmm. believe that if they showed a nurturing part of them, and, and there's women also that, that have, have mm -hmm. been bred in that way. This is why we're looking at the balance and saying abuse. Um, abuse comes from imbalance. Domestic violence is um, imbalance. It's imbalance mm -hmm. up here. It is a lack of discipline uh, over the impulses and the senses. So you react. And mm -hmm. so the man or the woman that has a lot of pride is not going to look at nurturing because pride keeps them from being a nurturer. If I show love and concern, then I am not a man or I am not, as in a woman, it would be, I'm showing, showing vulnerability. In a man, it's the same thing, but I want to address pride because pride is the issue, period. Vulnerability is something that if we all had vulnerability as the people were crying out in the streets and they still are, we would get more action in our homes as far as changes for the better. We would get more unity in our families because it wouldn't be someone that says, I have to be right and you're wrong all the time. It would be a balance mm -hmm. to say, let's sit down and agree. There would not be someone trying to whoop somebody's ass because you didn't hear me. Well, guess what? I probably didn't hear you because I'm not your child. Mm -hmm. And that's not the way to handle things. Rational human beings, they sit down and they talk things out. They plan things. The plan is not conclusive because you decided it. It is unified. How do you want to go about and do this? We all come together and bring our goals, mine and yours. The three of us, or um, I'm, I'm going to say the four of us, I got three windows. The four of us, if we create, and others that I work with, we have to come to a conclusive understanding that it's OK to disagree and then come back mm -hmm. into agreement. Yep. Absolutely. And fighting over the power to be right because I was programmed that I got to be right or I'm going to be I'm going to feel insecure if anybody finds out that I was ever wrong. All of us are wrong mm -hmm. about something. But in that that um that mindset of the man and the woman that does not give the nurturing aspects the nature is working. And Freud talks about this, but I'm talking about it from Kim because of right, my right. own experience. Nature will not allow you to use nurturing at times or until you've experienced it. Or maybe you were born as a cancer like Ashley and you have nothing but nurture. Now you got to find the nature. 
because nature and nurture balances out. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the problems in our families have been just that. Nature was saying, fight, fight, fight. Sometimes you're fighting yourself and you're looking at other people and you're fighting them, but it's the projection of your own images from your own trauma. Yes. You're fighting yes. yourself. People, people actually, they change. You know what I'm saying? And, and so when pride is prevalent, it will continue to fight things that really are good for you because you only see from the conflict within yourself that says, I can't be vulnerable. Because if everybody knew that I didn't know that, if they didn't know I knew I didn't know how to read, they would laugh at me. Well, who cares if they laugh at you? That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. If they knew that I had debt, they would laugh at me. Listen, you can get more help if you got debt and you tell somebody. Yes. Yep. Your mailbox mm -hmm. won't be filled up with bills. You could get some information on how to overcome that, right? Yes. But because pride says, I can't, I can't tell it. I, I, I'd be embarrassed or, or what it's going to do to me. You stay right there because you hit your wife or your husband. You continue to do it because you won't admit that you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Your lack of facing the truth is what gets you in a place where you either die from your fears and your worry or you man or woman up to change the dynamics that have been a part of our families forever. Whatever the problem is, we see it. We see the problems. I know that I was, I was raised by strong black women. And it, it taught me to emasculate the man verbally. That is not something that I do now, you know? I'm, I'm a very kind person. You know, I work with a lot of people that would say differently or I have experiences, but I'm, I'm, I'm quiet. I stay to myself. And there's times when I just got to speak up for myself, although some people just don't want you to speak up. It's healthy for me to have my opinion. Yes. If I don't have an opinion, then what do I have? You have mm. yours and I, res I validate that. A slave is what you have. Huh? Exactly. Mm -hmm. a, slave, a slave is what you oh, have. Oh, no, you know, I'm not. Okay, so then you, you address it. So if I can't mm -hmm. speak my truth or speak and you um, understand that I, I just have an opinion, then what I'm done, what, what's happening is, is I, you're shutting me up like I was or my ancestor was in the field. And some mm -hmm. people came here to liberate others in those areas, liberate themselves and then liberate others. And we flip it around. If you lived with a woman or a man that grew up and they felt like they always had to defend themselves, it's coming from a place. And you gotta, you gotta figure out where that place is for the person that is happening. Mm -hmm. But you gotta realize that you that experiences that trauma or sees things that way and you feel like you feel better to be able to be the talker or the one that's doing, the one that's hitting, you, you have to see that you have to get help. Why? Because all you're doing is repeating cycles that you've seen as a child or even something that came in your DNA and said, listen, you're gonna go back and you're gonna be a change agent concerning abuse. Mm -hmm. Something is speaking to your soul and telling you that you are here to change something within the collective or your family or dynamics. It's not always the person that is giving their opinion. How do you live? How do you live in a place, woman or man, where only your voice is to be heard? Mm -hmm. See, children like, were to be seen and not heard when I grew up. Oh, yeah. That's yes. getting damage to me. Oh, yeah. But I, yep. I just can't live in that kind of position anymore. And that was the way of our, our mothers and fathers and some of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. I believe that children should speak their peace. But the yes. mother and father has the last say. I believe yes. that husbands and wives should be able to sit down and talk. 
I feel like Martin Luther King about to preach and say, for I know that we shall overcome. <laughs> but we will not overcome until we listen, ears and spirit to each other. And sometimes truly we cannot listen because of the conflict that we have within, the fears and the worries. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just the ghost of our past. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it back to you guys and then we're gonna close down. One well, you know, I wanna thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> One thing that I say that we as um, a community of the black community has to stop doing is, I don't know about you guys, but my father always said, you have to be better. You have to be, you have to be better than them just to get half of what they got. And that made me feel like, well, am I not enough where I am now? And my wholeness, am I not enough? So I have to overachieve. I have to, I have to basically kill myself to be enough to get half of what they have to get half, not get, not get 75% or at least 100%, but 50% of what they, ha I have to be better than them just to settle for half. But see, that's the illusion. Yes. And that's, that's what we have to stop illusion. doing because we project that onto our children and then our children are growing up thinking and then our children grow up thinking that they're not enough. And then they go out in the world seeking that validation. That's what's going on now with the, with the, the Instagram community like everybody's seeking outside approval from, from somebody else but it's not that we have to stop doing it to our children we have to it's stop that. doing it to ourselves yes yes because yes. we tell ourselves i can say in the, in as a black woman i didn't want to go natural because permed hair was better hair straight hair was more beautiful mm -hmm. hair no the way the hair grows out of my head is the most beautiful way because that is how I was designed to be in mm -hmm. this world. So it got programmed into my mind that that's the way I needed to be. So had I not changed myself, I would have programmed it into my daughter. Mm -hmm. And then she could have been as a mother at when she gets to that point, if she chooses to programmed it into her children and kept creating cycles where I'm telling her, the world tells you you're not good enough, and I think you're not good enough, so you're not good enough. Yep. But we started with ourselves. We have poor self-talk. We have yeah. to change that. We have to mm -hmm. not only stop creating slaves by what master says, mm -hmm. we have to stop being slaves to ourselves and what we think the world is going to accept mm -hmm. because the world hasn't been accepting it, so maybe we have to change that world. I will say, though, the one thing that my father did instill in me, even though I hated it at that age, <laughs> whenever I would misbehave, my dad would literally grab a, grab a, a Merriam-Webster dictionary and would make me write it from A to Z and make up my own sentences and define it. And, he, and, and, and him doing that, he cultivated a thirst for knowledge within myself. And that was like the greatest gift that he could give to me because he grew up being told that he was stupid and that he was retarded and he couldn't read. And so in him growing up like that, he didn't want that from me. And so he changed that dynamic in our family, That's which awesome. makes it capable for me to change that dynamic in my family if I decide to have one or whenever I decide to have one. So, like, we have to change us first and then work on changing our family. Yes. Yes. Naila, any final thoughts? Um, you know, I just, real quick, just to go back to pride. Um, I think we have to remember that pride is a learned behavior. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and... <sighs> It, it's so abused. It, it, pride has become abusive. You know, even when you think about how people will really like have issue with you if you don't think the same things that they, they think. Yes. If you don't believe the same things that they believe. Like it will, in some relationships are um, destroyed just because you can't agree. And, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, we, how did we get to a place where husband and wife, you know, friends, p mother and daughter, families can't disagree on something and still love each other. Yes. Yes. And still yes. love each other. Yes. So it's, you know, pride is learned behavior. 
Um, and it was taught from, from the beginning of time. Yes, it was. And it has just manifested in different areas. And, and, and some, sometimes it, it happens very subtly that you don't even recognize it as pride, but it is. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So, okay, so we want everyone to know that if this video or anything in it resonates with you and you need any kind of assistance, we have personal development um, classes and sessions. Uh, you could email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. We have a class coming up on Friday at two o'clock, and that is going to be on Chiron and uh, Vesta. Chiron is the wounded healer. I did a video, I think yesterday or either, I can't, time is slipping. Anyway, I think it was yesterday or either this morning on Chiron. Um, I think I did a, oh yeah, meditation. But anyway, there's information because this will help those who have the Chiron aspect in whatever house understand what they need to do with that energy because it's the wounded healer, which means that your healing will provide healing for others and the woundings that you have are the foundation of that healing where you will heal uh, or be of assistance in, you know, to someone in their life. Now, the other thing is, okay, to capitalize again on personal development, um, to help you uh, get through these changing times, uh, to find out who you are, because a lot of people are getting lost in the challenges and where we're going, and so we can help you to find that. Um, groups in personal development. Uh, so again, ifwbuilders at gmail.com. All right. And so we thank you and um, sign up for the class on Friday. Um, have a blessed evening. Bye-bye.